Upon looking at this animation I made, your lizard brain probably tells you in your head, oh, that looks beautiful. But have you ever asked yourself why a particular piece of art actually looks good? Over many years of being an illustrator and animator specializing in making art that look quote unquote beautiful, I've deduced five replicable ingredients in stylized art that triggers our brain to believe a work is quote unquote beautiful. Knowing them is extremely important for maximizing the quality of your works, so if you want to ensure your posts get more than 10 likes, keep on watching. To start with, let's talk about reference merging. Reference merging is simply the process of finding as beautiful of references as possible and merging their qualities together. Check out this image by Sophia Ahmed, sorry if I butchered that, on Instagram. This was the image that actually kicked off this project for me. You'll be able to notice similarities between the two. In this picture, there are two main types of lily pads, the big green ones and the yellow smaller ones. This is an element that I use in my animation here. Make sure you look at this image from far away so that you can see it from a distance and thus observe the image from a broader perspective better. You could also squint your eyes to blur the image, which will be able to help you focus on the overall layout of the image and not get bogged down in the details when you're just starting out making a piece. To texture the lily pads themselves, I looked up more reference images on Pinterest and found ones that I thought were pretty, and then used the information I got there to inform my texturing. When it was time to add koi, I did the same exact thing, looking them up on Pinterest and taking qualities that I thought were the most beautiful about the koi, and combining them together. For example, this tail isn't exactly realistic, but I saw some art pieces of koi on Pinterest that had a tail that was more stylized like this, so I thought it would look cool, which is why I modeled it that way. As you can see here, we had our initial reference image to dictate the overall feel, and now we're using other reference images to try and determine how we want the individual subjects to look. We then bring this all together to get our final animation output. The next ingredient is light and color contrast. Now, you've probably heard this one already, but there are quite a lot of nuances involved in contrast. For example, some images hardly have any light contrast but still manage to be beautiful by compensating with either high detail, good color contrast, or a combination of the two. Generally, adding contrast in lighting is a balancing act, and you want to add just enough so that the image doesn't start to look messed up because the contrast becomes too deep fried. Color contrast is also very important. I'm sure you've all heard about using complementary colors before, like blue and orange, red and green, yellow yellow and purple, etc. The reason that's emphasized a lot is because it actually works very well. Look at this illustration I made a year and a half ago. She's wearing red and the background is green. So this is an example of a good execution of this theory. Additionally, keep in mind that color schemes of natural things tend to work very well. Other natural color schemes can be observed in nature like blue, white, and green, representing the sky, clouds, and grass. And if you use such a color palette in your works, you'll make something beautiful. Moving on, let's talk about gradients. These are quite interesting and people never really talk about them. There are two main styles of gradients you can make linear gradients and stepped gradients. On these lily pads, I used a stepped gradient going from left to right to add a sort of contrasty anime effect to it. This just makes it feel nicer visually so that it's not so bland and just like a default lily pad with basic tune shading. There's also linear gradients you can use, but be careful because oftentimes they can do more harm than good. I used a linear gradient on the lotus flower here, which gave it a nice effect, simulating as if it's darker on the underside. The downside to linear gradients though is they can give a sort of plasticky effect to your model if not used properly. Now let's talk about detail. Realistic things tend to have a lot of detail, so your goal when making stylized art is to add as much detail as necessary, but not to the point of photorealism. These lily pads are a great example once again. The step gradient I used gives it detail, and I added the spiral to the center. In the koi, since they naturally have the red and white pattern, I was able to just use that as the detail and not focus too much on anything else. There would have been no point to go in on the fins and make them have every little detail. That red and white pattern alone distracts the eye enough to the point where I don't have to worry about much else. If the camera was zoomed in more, maybe, then we'd have to actually detail the fins a bit more. For the lotus, there's a lot of petals, each one having a nice outline around them, and so that outline provides for a pleasurable viewing experience of a detailed flower. Lastly, let's talk about variety. This one is quite obvious. For example, all of the fish are moving at slightly different speeds, making it less linear and a little more chaotic. They also have different sizes. The lily pads too have different sizes and are rotated in varying directions. Same with the lotus flower. This last ingredient is quite simple but makes a big difference in the final layout of your work. That being said, if you guys want a step-by-step -step tutorial going in-depth on how I made this animation, check out stylizedkitchen.io. It's a place that I routinely update with new courses, new tutorials, and all that stuff, and when you join, you'll have access to all of my future content there free of charge. You'll also get access to my Windy Armature add-on and the Blender MMA Oceans add-on as a bonus. And we also have a Discord there where you can ask me literally whatever you want about Blender, and I'll be there to guide you and help you. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video informative.